everyone. Welcome to the Meebo Podcast. Whether you are hitting record for the very first time or you've done it a million times, we're still going to give you some great tactical tips, tricks, and pieces of advice. We've got a great guest who's super knowledgeable and experienced in the category of filmmaking. Tony with us today. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's yeah. So talk to me about what got you into filmmaking. I, I was doing some some digging on, on your website. You know, immigrated parents came in and, you know, you're kind of part of that. You start in LA, mm-hmm. so I just got to ask, how'd Milwaukee end up in the Dude, picture? <laughs> this is the, the the question I get all the time because it, it's so drastic, man. Like, yeah, like coming from, like my parents immigrated from Mexico, um, and obviously, you know, LA is the closest thing mm-hmm. to to Mexico. So, um, was born and raised there, moved here when I was about fifteen. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of funny, man, because like I, I it's like I'm half and half. It's like born and raised culturally in Los Angeles, but then became an adult here mm-hmm. in the Midwest. Um, the, the story I get from like my parents was, uh, was basically just to get away okay. from all the craziness. You know, LA has always been a crazy place. Um, and I think that's why what makes it so beautiful, but, um, raising kids, it's, it's, I get it. Like I have, I have three kids and, uh, I think the way I grew up and was raised, I don't think I would want that for my kids, mm. you know? Um, so I think, you know, safety was, was what they, my, what she was looking for. And, uh, she just came to visit Chicago for a trip and was like, you know what? Gas is not $7, you know, houses are cheap. <laughs> like, yeah. um, and this is in what? 2004. Okay. So a lot's changed since then, but, um, yeah, it's kind of the, kind of the reason why we came over here was just to kind of start over, um, fresh and, and. You know, I, I'm still here, you know, um, it's different. The beauty is that I can go back and visit, mm-hmm. you know, um, but I'm raising kids and I have a family and I think, you know, staying here is, they're the reason why I'm still here. Okay. Yeah. Do you still have roots, enough roots to, to make a, a good trip out of LA if you need to go Always. back? Always. My uh, best friend lives there. Uh, my core friends I was born and raised with. Um, they're, they're there. My, my cousins, my mom moved back. Funny. Okay. <laughs> She's like, you're good now. Like, I'm going to go back. <laughs> you're 18. I'm kicking yeah. myself out yeah. back out to LA. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So she's back, uh, not LA specifically, but she moved to San Bernardino, which is like okay. right over yep. the mountain. Yep. Um, and so, yeah, so she, she's, she's out there retired with my stepdad and just, just living life. And, uh, they make it a pretty easy excuse to go visit every year. So I'm there at least maybe three times a year. Okay, cool. Yeah. Do you notice any of that culture, whether it's either because you have parents that did immigrate or just your time in LA, any influence into your work today? Oh yeah, man. Like, um, I would, I I wouldn't say professionally right now because, uh, the way, the way I started was, was with skateboarding. Like, okay. like, you know, I, I used to skate, um, and, and I, and back in the day, I don't know if you guys remember, but like Jackass oh, yeah. was super big. Yeah. We were, we were both still in that time. Yeah. So. Like CKY was, yep. was like my jam, you know, these like DVDs you had to like buy like these weird shops, you know? Yep. Um, and that was actually my inspiration. You know, Bam Margera was like my idol. Dude. Oh yeah. And so um, he inspired me a lot because not only was he doing skateboarding videos, but he was also like incorporating like these skits and, uh, you know, music videos style with skateboarding. He, it, was, it was a weird collective and that really inspired me. So actually he's the reason why I picked up a camera. Okay. Um, and I was, you know, skate culture is obviously super huge in LA and I was a skater and we had a group of skaters, um, you know, and so my parents, I grabbed my parents a uh, little VHS camera and would make sponsor me tapes you know? Okay. okay. Uh, and so that's kind of what got me into it. But when I moved here, obviously that culture shift was really drastic. It kind of got eliminated. And so filmmaking just be, or just making videos in general, which just kind of went out the window. Um, but what really kind of brought it back to life was, uh, the Canon Mark II. Yes. You know, was like, Oh my God, we can actually make some real stuff. Like not this like VHS tape stuff anymore. We can really make some like really cool cinematic stuff. So uh, bought one, but, uh, I had to make money, you know? So I just dove into what everybody does with the cameras. Let's shoot some weddings. Oh yeah. That's like the easiest thing yep. you could do. Like, 100%. This, like, like I can make some money. I could use this camera. It's a market that never is going away. Never so. <laughs> going away. You can always eat with weddings yep. and, and, uh, there's so many levels to it, you know? Um, so I would say like, 
that's kind of like, I wish I could incorporate my culture in some way, but it's just, we're just in two different worlds, you know? Mm -hmm. So a lot, a lot of the work, if I do um, any creative, like my spec ad, like some of that stuff is like a little bit of like my route. Um, I got to do some cool stuff uh, for, for Rihanna. Um, okay. So I was out in LA, LA doing some, some cool stuff for that. So I kind of incorporated my little flavors in there, but it's hard, man. It's hard to like to, to, I don't know, encapsulate like, what I like into professional work because of just, you know, people, people want to make content that revolves around what, what they're doing and not necessarily me. So a lot of what I would do to, from it's passion projects, really like spec ads, you know, and that's where I put my little flavor of, of just me, my personality, uh, you know, some skateboarding stuff, some old VHS stuff, you know, yeah definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is your approach? So that I, I guess before I get there, let, let me ask this on the flip side. What cultural pieces from the Midwest have you maybe seen yourself kind of start to incorporate into your work? Maybe even on like, you know, you go back out to L.A., work on some like three on piece. Was there anything that you're like, oh, yeah, I kind of see some see some op happening in this piece. Some <laughs> op. <laughs> some op. Um, I would say like in the wedding world, man, I was in the wedding world for a little bit. I was, I was in there for about six years. And, uh, um, I think in my, in my filmmaking style, I kind of still wanted to do me. And, uh, what I've noticed was like a, a lot of just, it's very family oriented, I, mm -hmm. I would say. Um, and I was a little jealous, you know, okay. cause like I, I would see some families of just like, they're just so tight knit, you know? It actually just, it, it actually inspired me because like being here, I have no family, I have just my mom. It was just me right. and my mom. So like, I would say like taking some of the things that like I was missing being here and seeing it in other people and being able to leverage that like storytelling aspect and just be like really make that a focus and, and, you know, but culturally, I don't know. I don't think they're like, the two are connected, to be okay. quite That's honest. Fair. Yeah. So then take us through your journey of sponsor tapes. Any any yeah. leads on that, by the way? Did you get any sponsors from that? Unfortunately, All right. no, we're not I, that good. It's okay. I, I was on the side <laughs> of, I tried skateboarding, I couldn't ollie, and then I just gave up. And I'm like, well, I gave it a shot. <laughs> I was the guy that broke his arm multiple times <laughs> to the point where I was like, yeah, this isn't fun to be yeah. in the ER all the time. So the, the camera really got me out of a lot of like dangerous mm -hmm. stuff that we were doing. We were reckless, man. Like we would do like uh, loading docks. Uh, oh, yeah. There is always some LA has tons of skate spots, you know, s multiple stairs. Like my friends were just wild. Um, I'm not that wild, you know, right. I'm more, I'm a little more conservative, but uh, yeah. So uh, it was a good time. Yeah. So how did that then kind of become a career? I would say just. Really, it's just like telling stories, man. It's really just telling stories and like just just cold. Like, I think v video and culture go together real nice. And I feel like, like at that time, like skate culture was our world, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and it has a vibe to it. It's kind of hard to put into into perspective, you know. Yeah. Um, and I love it. I, I really do. And and the guys that are doing it now are just they're still keeping it raw, keeping it real. Um, I would love to, to continue that. But again, like just being here, it's a little bit disconnected. Um, but yeah. So then what keeps you in Milwaukee? I, I mean, obviously family and stuff, family, but like creatively, man. what, mm -hmm. is there anything to that, that you're like, Oh, you know, are you trying to find opportunity for yourself to maybe still be rooted here, but kind of find opportunity to, to do some freelance work outside of of the area. That's the beauty of the internet, I think, in the pandemic was was now that like so so like sorry, I moved this mic. <laughs> um with with the internet and and the way we communicate now, it's much easier. So like I don't feel like I need to go back. There was a time and place where I was like, dude, I gotta be in LA. Like I can't, mm -hmm. I can't be here. Like the work isn't isn't here. It's unfortunately like love Wisconsin. But it's not here and it's, it's seldom in chicago like chicago is very like nbc you know it's 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 still lacking like that just like raw la culture like let's just go out and shoot and just it's just it's just gonna be fun um so i always had it like i gotta go back i gotta go back 
But like the pandemic really showed me that like I could still make connections online and I could just fly there, mm-hmm. you know, and the cost of living is a huge factor as to why I stay. Like I, dude, I own a house. Um, I have three kids. Like I'm living the, the Joneses right now, you know, like I got <laughs> pretty much a lot of stuff that my friends just till this day at 35 have yet to achieve only for the reason that it's just, it's not feasible in LA, man. Yeah. It's like, you know, one bedroom house is like, 1.5 million, yeah. you know, apartments are $2,500 for a studio. Like it's insane. It's insane. The work granted is there, but like what keeps me here is, is just easier living, peace of mind of safety for my family, you know, and not having to worry too much. Um, but then also just being able to just like, I could just travel, I could just go yeah. over there, you know? And, and that's, that's what's funny with the, with the Rian job. I have never thought I would land that, but like having connections still like to people in LA, like that's how I was able to really kind of land it, you know? Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, it's kind of the beauty of the internet, you know? What do you think Milwaukee and even Chicago to an extent need to kind of bring themselves up into that level? Is it just more people just getting there and doing the thing or is it something else do you think dude i feel like i feel like sometimes and 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 maybe just because i'm like i'm older like the young young generation is doing it really well like they're getting connected they're doing things they're meeting people i feel like as we get older we're just kind of like more isolated i guess you know and our time's more limited and valuable yeah that we're not like just hanging out and just thinking of random ideas to just go shoot i think now that we're older and more professional, like every, every like thing that we do has to have intention. We have bills to pay. So it has to have some kind of financial backing unless it's a passion project. And and that's, but like, I don't know, like it's for me, um, for one, Wisconsin's got to have some kind of tax benefit to bring studios here. Um, there has to be some kind of incentive because, uh, without that, like, why would they come here? You know, mm-hmm. Atlanta's a hot spot right now because of those incentives. Um, you know, they're building out studios. Yeah. Like Atlanta's the new Hollywood. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, look, Tyler Perry's whole production's out of there, it, right? It's massive. Yeah. It's huge. But it's Atlanta. Like it's the middle of the South. Like it's not, it's not Hollywood. But like that to me is just like we could do that here. There's just no there's not enough interest for some reason within like our our legal system, our government, our tax system. But Atlanta just was like, yeah, like let's, let's bring it here. Like, let's give tax breaks. Let's give, let's give opportunity. And, and dude, people are my, a lot of my friends moved from here oh, yeah. to there. Yeah. And, uh, they're, they're doing killing it, man. They're having a lot of fun. Yeah. So what's been your favorite project that you worked on so far? If you want to talk about kind of how you got into the world of Rockwell and, and kind of your start there and some of the projects <laughs> you've been able to work on. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. Like, uh, it's, it's funny, dude. Cause like, like the biggest, the biggest one was that Rihanna job, but mm-hmm. like, I will be super honest. It was the most grueling one. Okay. Talk to me about that. Dude, it was grueling because, um, you know, it, when it comes to agencies, like there's always, there's always a disconnect in communication, like from like the visionary to the director to like client. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, what happened was like, we, we got to the finish line. We, we showed up like to the spot where this event was happening. And, uh, the, the team was just like, yeah, we're, we're not feeling this, but like <laughs> oh, no. shows in like 24 hours, yeah. you're not feeling this. Like yeah. we spent weeks shooting content. Like we did all the rele- the, the, the product releases. We hired models. Like we, we did the whole night and we were, we were doing 16 hour days, you know, just pumping this stuff out. And uh, another 20 hours of editing on location. Oh, geez. So like it, it was just, it was grueling. And then the agency was overseeing it all of it, you know, and they're like checking all this stuff off. But then come to the client, it's like, ah, we want to change it. <laughs> so um, it was, it was a grueling experience. It was a learning experience. Mm-hmm. Um, but dude, I think, I think it was, it was the most satisfying thing because it's like a big name. Um, we got to see it like, in fruition like the the concept was um they they wanted all this product stuff on on four walls so they're projecting all this stuff and they had like a lipstick thing um in the center column and uh we put content around that so like to see it like live and like 
real mm-hmm. life. It was really, really cool and all the time and effort spent on it. But it really opened my eyes to like, do I really want to do that? You know? And so I don't know, man. It's just, it's uh filmmaking is just it's it's a it's a weird, it's a weird industry. Um, because either you work like a hound and your whole personal life is just gone, you know? Yep. Or you just do what you love, but may not get any any kind of like validation from it, you know? You just gotta pick your battles, you know? Um, and for me, like that was satisfying, mm-hmm. but it, it showed me that's not what I wanna do. Like that's that's not the kind of life I, I, I want for my, for me, you yeah. know? Like it's, it, I'm just not into the the that type of hustle, you know, where it's just, you're a robot in this cog and, and, and you know, you're working your ass off and, and then for what, like, you know, like your, your, your wife's mad at you, your kids yeah. miss you, you know, it's like, ah, yeah, the pay was great, but like, like at, at what expense, you know? And so, um, like I said, fun, mm-hmm. checked off my list of like things that I, I, I wanted to do. It really also showed me like the avenue I want to be in. Like, yeah. I think, I think I'm converting more into being an editor than okay. I am like on site set location type of shooter, DP, director. Like I I think I've always dreamt of a beach being a director, you know? I'm not like a tech kind of person. I, I never like I'm not into the latest cameras. I'm not into like the latest lens. I'm just like into what looks good and what gives me that feeling. Um, whether it's an older camera or or whatever. Like that stuff doesn't interest me. So like directing was like always kind of in my lane more than like a cam op. But uh, again, like just multiple jobs of just 16 hour days, early starts, you know, late finishes. And uh, I think now I'm just like more like, I actually do enjoy more of the editing process. Okay. I enjoy, because if you really think about it, like the 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 video or the movie's made in the edit or, or oh, yeah. like the, like yeah, the, the magic's sure. happen in the edit. Yeah. You know, it's not really on location, you know? And I think I've, I've found more of a love and passion in that that world than just stressing out. Like, I mean, it definitely set. gives you a leg up because you know you've spent so much time as a director, as a DP, that like yeah. you know what you're looking for when you get that footage, and yeah. you're like, all right, here's how. You, there might be some like, oh, if only they would have. But yeah, at the at the end of the day, you're like, okay, I can see what was being done. I can see why I can craft this into this. Yeah, it's 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 it's. I don't, like I, I love telling stories. I think that's that's why I got into it. You know, mm-hmm. even with the skating stuff, like I love showing like just our world. Yeah. You know, and, and crafting that in the edit. Like, dude, when when I, when I used to make those videos on on VHS, like I didn't have a computer. Like we were, I was I was broke, man. Was, was that weird. the two VHS system where play, dude, record, rewind? I didn't even have a second VHS <laughs> to even do that. So my 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 thing was I had a, a VHS player which I connected the camera into, but then. Um, what, what I did was I recorded the the output from the VHS into like a uh, the tape yep, deck. Yep, yep. And then when I would cut, I'd actually would play it on the TV and record it with the camera. Okay. Onto the okay. tape. That's so cool. I would like start stop. <laughs> and like the music, the way I put music was I'd have music in the background, like on a radio <laughs> yeah. and like the camera to pick up that. So like I, and I think like if I look overall from like start to, to like now, I think I've always enjoyed just editing, you know, and and that was like a sign for me that just like like I just love that that process more than <laughs> I guess being like um, out and about, you know. Yeah. So I was looking through your work, and one thing that really stood out to me was was the Fenty piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just loved the combination of, and I'm gonna kind of ask the same question different ways. Um, for a lot of the things that you've worked on, because I think yeah. that the message of your work and creativity holds true for a lot of what you do. Yeah. But there was a beautiful relationship between the product shots and yeah. the acted shots. Yeah. How did that all come together? Was that a was that something that you know you had? I know a lot of the work you probably are the one kind of pitching the creative, but yeah. how did that kind of come together? It came together um, kind of. Uh, it was a, it was a mess. I'm gonna be real mm-hmm. honest. Like. Uh, it, there was really, there was really a, just a concept and the person in charge just didn't know how to execute. So, um, uh, he ended up working with an agency that's actually out of Chicago. Okay. 
Um, and uh, friends of mine that work there, and, and that's who they got me kind of plugged in, you know? And so um, where I came in was just like, they were saying like, this is what we want. Like, can you just make it happen? Mm -hmm. You know? And so um, I didn't really have like a treatment. Okay. I didn't have uh, a concept piece. It was just like, we have these shots. We have um, some inspo from the, from the product release that, that they put out. Um, the perfume wasn't put out yet, but okay. they had put out some of the, the release for like the lipstick and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, it was like a poolside stuff. So like the whole concept was like by the pool, um, uh, kind of that, that like summer fun. Yep. Yeah. And so the, the perfume release was, was kind of, uh, I would say like more, um, sorry, my phone's going off. No, you're good. Um, kind of wishy-washy, you know, there was no, there was no vision. There was no, there's, so we pulled inspiration from just the brand itself. Okay. Um, and they gave us a product and, and, uh, you know, kind of put stuff together that we liked, you know, we had this big, uh, led wall. Mm -hmm. We could put anything on it. It was 2d. So we didn't do any, any kind of like, uh, 3d renders or right. like that, but we still kept it kind of very summer vibes. Um, you know, all that, that jazz and just kind of went with it, you know, just did our own thing and had a ton of fun with it, <laughs> but, uh, didn't end up getting, none of it got used because <laughs> it, it looked great. I mean, yeah, it, I yeah. thought the duality and I mean, I know that, you know, what you showed in, in your personal channels might not have been exactly what was representative of the final product, but there, yeah. you just, you have a good eye of like the duality of the, the product, yeah. what they're buying and yeah. the why of what they're buying it for. Right. Yeah. So how, where does that come from in your mind? Is that something that kind of just comes naturally to you or is there something that you kind of look for as inspiration for that? It's a little bit of both, you know, cause uh, I'm not in the makeup world, obviously. Right. But, but that's why it's so, yeah. I was like, yeah. okay, but you still get it. You yeah. still bring it all together. I think part of it is like, it, especially with that brand with, you know, the, the roots are, are, were very SoCal. Um, so I think it kind of brought a little of that element of like that summer vibe, mm -hmm. like, a, you know, summer's 24 seven over there. So yeah. like I kind of, had that like already instilled in me, but um, to be quite honest, a lot of it was just like, was inspo from like the product brand itself and like how they they market their stuff and like their vibe and like how they they like to put out. Um, and uh, a little bit of like me and just incorporating some of like where I come from and, and what how I can see this product kind of launching. Again, there's no treatment, there's no way of shooting it. So it was all off the cuff. And uh, I think it worked out great, you know, it was fun. Um, so I think you came on my radar yeah. initially through the Makers Wanted piece yeah. with Rockwell. And and what immediately struck me about that piece that I thought was so beautiful is at the end of the day, yeah. it's a hiring video. Yeah. How how did that I mean, you think of hiring videos, you're gonna all right, let's let's sit down three people, an interview, let's yeah. it's testimonial, it's oh, you should totally come work here. Yeah. You flip that shit on its head. <laughs> yeah, how dude. did that come about? Dude, ah man, so Kudos to Anthony Jones. If you're watching this, like me and him, like are on the same level of like what we want to see when it comes to content mm -hmm. and what's edgy and what's cool and what stands out. Um, and and previous to, to us recording, you know, we kind of said like, you know, Rockwell it doesn't specifically. It does, it's not a sexy like engineering is not super sexy you know um but the stuff that they do is super cool you know and and when it comes to a group of the, like of engineers and, and and tech people like like they're so in their world that like stylistically they're just not they don't care mm -hmm. you know they just they're not interested but um in order for us to be able to sell something that is not that sexy we had to make it super sexy and um you know, a, a lot of like watching what what other like companies were doing, not specifically in in, in, in engineering. Right. Like, there's no engineering company that created a piece like what we did. You know. Agreed, yeah. But we were inspired by what other companies were doing. Like, uh, uh, we saw like a McDonald's piece. Oh, H and M. Uh, okay. Shout out to Caitlin. Uh, she found this this uh, this this spec at or no this this, this commercial. And it had a lot of the the treatment stuff that we had, like the the film burns and mm -hmm. like this crazy like setups, like multiple sets per per like. Um, in our case, we use it for positions, okay. but on the H and M video, it was like a wardrobe. So like it was like a dress or jeans, and there were all different sets for every product that mm -hmm. they were releasing. So I took that concept and made the employees the product, 
Yep. You know, and worked with a, a really cool set designer who was able to take like my crazy ideas and kind of make them real according to the job spec that we were featuring. So mm -hmm. like one of my favorite shots is the money shot. That, I mean, it's, yes, yes. Like Asiana, like she, she was a lady in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the, in the video and she is just like boss bitch, like, yes. you know, finance type of person. And so we're like, okay, this woman like is like top tier, like, you know, she, she gets down, like she, she has a look, she could play the part, but I want hers to be like super unique and how can we do that? You know? And my set designer was like, why don't we just like hang money up? Like, you yeah. know, and like she, she kudos to, to, to Tessa for doing that. Like she really kind of came up with that concept, but like the way we shot it, Asiana, it was like, just like, like chemistry, well, well made. And, and we got these just beautiful shots, man. And uh, there's so much being said, and I mean that shot specifically without yeah. being inconsiderate or yeah. like egotistical about it yeah. like that shot just really encompassed everything about that piece and yeah. then you know you have the the story from beginning to end where the first shot is she's painting the canvas yes and then at the end you see the culmination of it yeah. and again it's a hiring video but the, yeah. the way that it came together with the tagline chef's kiss makers wanted man it, it was it was a fun 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 project um and, and yeah, like, again, like, like the people were our products mm -hmm. and, uh, the cool thing too, no actors, those are all employees. Well, I, I assume so because it was specific names yeah. and yeah. roles yeah. on that piece. Yeah. So. so try directing employees who do not like to be on camera. Yes. Everyone killed it on that, that, that project. I think, I think that right there is a huge testament, uh, testament to like pre-production. Mm -hmm. Pre-production is key. There's so many people that I see that don't do any pre and just think they could just wing it. No, man, these are, we, we spent at least three months, like from like inspiration to concept, to location, to choosing our employees, to then working with a set designer based on the ideas. And then the magic just, it, dude, it was like, you know, it was just like everything just came together so well. And a lot of it had to do with just really, really good planning. Mm -hmm. Fenty, Horrible planning, yeah, right? Terrible planning, as you can see that like day of the show, like we scrapped eighty percent of the stuff that yeah. we did, you know. And so, like, guys, like if you're listening, pre-production, always, like, definitely write out your stuff, envision it, then go out and do it, you know. What are your What is your pre-production process? Talk, talk us inspiration. Okay. Finding inspiration, um, because at the end of the day, like. You can have mad ideas, but we're 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 essentially marketers too. Mm -hmm. You know, um, find out the uh, the industry that you're in, and and how can you see what's out there and see how you can be different, not the same, but like completely different. This makers wanted, we were a hundred percent completely different from yes. from any other engineering company. That was the goal. And company I, period. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest. Yeah, seriously, and uh, I, I feel like finding like brands that like you connect with and seeing how you can tie that into the work that you're doing and how that still fits into the mm -hmm. brand because you still got to remain brand centric like you yes. have to it still has to represent Rockwell you know no matter what so taking those two just finding things that are really cool to you that you know you can do you can pull off that still like is your style and just making it your own but um first off just finding inspiration and then finding people, people that, that, that A, you want to work with, that A, can do the things that you are trying to do that you can't do. Um, a lot of stuff that, that was on that Makers Wanted was stuff that I was really kind of like not fully experienced in. So you hire people that know how to do it. Yeah, 100%. So, but which is super cool because like I just, I, that was like a true directing job. Like I was literally like just directing the vision Mm -hmm. making sure I, I'm, I'm essentially the client because I work at Rockwell. Right. So I knew what we were, we were going to attack, but um, it, it's, it's really, yeah. Um, knowing what it is that you're going to do, hire people that, that, that know that they can pull that stuff off. And, and yeah. Um, but to finish off your question, how do I, it's inspiration, then finding people and then just executing, you know, just, just really putting in the time effort and uh, you'll get a solid product every time. I think. 
what are your ways to find inspiration? Are you somebody that just kind of looks in the world around you, or is there like a specific spot that you go? Are you a Pinterest? Or are you a you know? Are there websites that you go to? Like, all right, let me just watch a bunch of commercials. There's brands that like you connect with. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just like, like like some people are Patagonias. Yeah. You know, uh, for me, like uh, you know, I, I like Carhartt. Uh, there's a company called Born and Raised. Um, I feel like I've heard of them. Yeah, I actually got a Born and Raised shirt under this, <laughs> suit, but it's uh, we're in the Midwest, so it's cold. Um, yeah. But uh, those to me, like everybody has like a like a, a pile of brands that you connect with personally, and they're putting out stuff that represents their brand, but like in a way that you're really like, kind of attracted to. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, I find inspiration from that. You know, um, and, and just kind of mixing those two worlds together. I like that a lot. Mm -hmm. One thing that I always appreciate about the work that you've done, and, and I guess may I, I need to start by asking, I don't know necessarily the behind the scenes of like the hierarchy of Rockwell. Are you in charge of the creative? Do you have to report to somebody about the creative? Who's really in charge of like the final say of, all right, check, let's do, you know, so Makers One is a lot of companies or yeah. eight, even video production agencies, anything. You think about taking a concept like that and pitching to a client, you start to bite your nails a little bit because you're like, eh, that's definitely uh, <laughs> not what they're used to seeing. Dude, so like, how, yeah. who's who's the final say? How does that go about? Yeah, especially with a company like Rockwell. Rockwell does not put a lot of commercials out and they don't actually do a lot of like specific ad targeting mm -hmm. like that. Um, so we were, we were doing something pretty dangerous, quite, quite honest, like, and still like no one understood the concept until it was final. Yeah. So we were really rolling the dice. On top of it, it wasn't even our money. It was, uh, it was um, a, a money from a different business unit, you know? Okay. So the hierarchy was was a little bit weird because like my team were in charge of of talent marketing, but we um, at that time like we we were getting uh, we had needs for like software people, um, uh, engineers, and so the way it works, it's kind of weird. Like they're kind of like our clients. Like they have mm -hmm. a need, they say, hey, like we're hiring, okay. like we need content to attract these people. Um, so they'll hit us up and that's kind of how makers want it kind of happened. But we also had like to show off all the jobs that, that we kind of feature that we're, we're hiring for, you know? Um, so again, like we wanted to make something really cool. We had the funds, um, but uh, really dude, there was no hierarchy. There was like no one like approving it. It was just me. So Anthony. they did give you the creative freedom to kind of let loose and here's the budget. We gave ourselves the creative freedom. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no one was overseeing it. Like no, no, just just us. Like we we. And that's why I ask because it's yeah. like like you said, like you're kind of both the client and they're kind of the client, yeah. but you're the employee and they're kind of the. So it's like weird. Yeah, it's weird. I just want to make sure I wasn't getting things too twisted, um, because then the other piece of that I think specifically speaks to kind of what I like about the work that you do is there was I forget exactly what this was for, so forgive me, but you had um, like a backdrop. And like a bunch of plants in like a lobby and there was like people that would like kind of come in and you there was like some out of that but that was just a shot that i remember and it was just so cool because you took something that's like so i guess the overall point of what i'm trying to make is is the way that you work i think you do such a good job of taking something that's so buttoned up by yeah. you know stereotypical <laughs> means yeah and you pull that out of there and you're like listen we're just people yeah like i'm gonna show like even the Maker's Want piece, like you're you're working for the people. These are the jobs. These are the people. Like, how do you kind of begin to take some of the sterileness out of stuff that, for a global company like right. Rockwell, you have to make it so that it reaches and talks to a lot of people. It does. Yeah, yeah. We're a global company too, and and sometimes people do forget that. And uh, uh, if you go outside of Milwaukee, like the cultures are very different, you know. And so being able to kind of create something that's not dry, but mm. that can be watchable for all cultures. Like for that example was that H&M uh, ad, yeah. you know, that can be played anywhere and, and it will be recepted, you know, well, because right. it's just, it's just a beautiful piece, yeah. you know? And so that was enough for me to be like, okay, if we can make something beautiful, no, it would just not fit in this one zone. Like we can, this is, this can be, viewed and enjoyed globally yeah. you know and if we kind of stick to like the way the culture is at Rockwell which is very engineered it's very bundled up it's very clean mm -hmm. it's very you know then we're really isolating ourselves you know from the rest of the world because like not everybody dude this is my work attire yeah you know right like 
yeah, granted, there are people that do enjoy a suit and tie. That's fine. But we're now in a time where like people just want to be themselves, you know, and so we have to make content that not just resonates to one core group. Mm -hmm. It has to resonate with everybody, you know, especially if we're going to be a global company. We just can't represent one zone because dude, we go to Barcelona. They're beautiful. Yeah. Like like every fashion, like the way they dress, like it's just like it's them, yeah. you know, and we can't just come across like just, you know, dry. Yeah. You know, I agree. Uh, a, a big part of, I think, recently what you're kind of diving into and starting to dive into is the spec work. Yeah. And the recent piece spec work they did for Nike could have been a Nike ad <laughs> for what, you know, anybody's concerned. Yeah. How important is spec work to you and your creativity? Now it's being a lot more important because, um, you know, I, I, I've been at Rockwell for a long time. They keep me super busy. Um, and I kind of just ended up in this zone of like, like, it's kind of like in the wedding world, you know, what you do one wedding, someone sees it and they want the same thing. And it mm -hmm. just kind of just, that's what happens that you just end up just doing it's that all the you're time. The right like, you're like, yeah. actually, uh, I only did it cause I needed money <laughs> and, uh, I like filming stuff, but it's not really my passion. It's not what I really want to yeah. do. So hence why I had to get out of the wedding world. And I wanted to be more in a, a marketing environment. So six years now, I'm like, now I'm like in a reset. Like mm -hmm. I still love what I do and I still want to work with companies. I think, I still think like what I do is, is fun and enjoyable and it's good living. It's good. It's, it, I'm happy. Yeah. Um, but there's always that itch I want to scratch of like, how far can I push this and not have any oversight, not have anyone tell me, uh, change that, change that, change that. Like this is all raw, like out of my brain onto this screen and this is what I want to see. And there's so much freedom in that, that I feel like spec work allows you to like really spread your wings and just go nuts because you're not held to any standard, any way of doing it. Like, you know, budget might constrain you, but that might even inspire you even more. Like, how can I do this with no money, Right. you know? Um, and sometimes that actually makes a better product, you know? It's not always about like the latest tech or, or wall. We just so happen that like with that wall, like uh, with the guys at Backyard Dreams, um, it's a fairly new wall. They 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 wanted to to create you know um, buzz. Yep. So um, that was they they had a bunch of people come out for that play basketball and and they hit me up. Hey man, like we're we're doing this. You want to come shoot? Like no story. Like I'm like yeah yeah I'll do it. And so um, we had some cool visuals and and. Uh, as I as I went in, like I already knew what I wanted. Okay. The way I, the way like I wanted it to look, the the background shots that I wanted. Like I saw a couple of Instagram photos of this guy doing like a kind of like a Michael Jordan dunk over a sun. Okay. It was super cool, but and we had a sun uh, render, and so but I didn't want to copy, so I'm like, what what can we do to make this cool, you know? And so everything was like kind of directed on the fly, but um, it was just like a big mashup of just shots. And uh, I wanted to turn into like something that's like kind of like a commercial style and, and just had so much fun doing it, man. You know, I think it's important, too, because like the cool part about that is so there's somebody else that we know that recently put out a, a reel of theirs. And the first shot was um, a Fresnel, perfect circle oh, Fresnel, cool. like carbon copy of, of basically your first shot. Yeah. And I was like, that was so cool to me because I'm like two very similar creative thoughts done only with the resources that they had available. Yeah. So how how important is it to kind of work through those things of like, all right, here's maybe what I only have available. You know, how do you take the big idea <laughs> and bring it down into something that you can actually present? Um, that's where creativity comes in. Yeah. Really, you just gotta get creative. Um, I would say like for like in my case, I can only speak on, mm -hmm. on my behalf. Is like that wall. I'm just lucky. Like these guys just so happened. Right. I think if I would have done it differently um, and I didn't have a wall, then I, I probably would have would have made it even more urban. I probably would have taken it to a park or or, or done some maybe like a garage mock up. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It still would have happened anyway, I think. Um, but yeah, I think it just just with restraint, just got to get creative, you know? Mm -hmm. 
And with that, man, what what truly goes into a good story? Because I mean, that's a that's a Nike spec ad, yeah. Right? Again, Nike's very good at selling the yeah. people, not the product. So how how do you create really a truly and I mean, even with your time at Rockwell, a good story? Like, what goes into a good story, in your mind? For me, it's it's what resonates. You know, it, it's it's what what we're into. Like what like. I hate the word trendy, mm-hmm. you know, but like what, what really at, at this current moment, like what, what's, what's cool. Um, what is it that people want to see, but how do you make it your own, you know? Um, and story is so important because visuals are great, but like also like I, I stick to the bare bones of the story, like art, right. you know, like if I'm doing an interview, like I would say for like an interview or like any type of like, passion project that involves like a storyline i stick to the basics man mm-hmm. you know it's it, it's really what it comes down to um but sometimes you can just get a little wild like it doesn't need to have a story all the time you know it could just be like a visual beautiful art piece and and let the audience interpret that however they want you know like yeah yeah i definitely think i see that in your work because like you mm-hmm. do it's for you, yeah. I think, a lot of time, but you do leave it open to enough. You allow the viewer to also have a creativity to how they choose to see the piece. Exactly, yeah. Which I think it's very powerful. Talking about editing, you know, what's your approach to video editing? You know, you, you want to spend more time in the editing room, so kind of what's your process? I think you do a really good job of, of bringing in, like, the film burns, you know? It's kind yeah. of a, it's a retro feel, but, yeah. you know, you're making it work in a more professional setting or you know yeah. settings that you you normally wouldn't see it in so kind of what's your yeah. process there i gravitate that to because it, it goes back to my roots of like mm-hmm. just you know vhs and and granted these are eight millimeters this is before my time right. and at one point it was super like that that like look is super hot and sometimes it's actually i hate to say it, but it's kind of tacky you know it can be it but, can be but, but again, done you, right exactly done yes. right done with intention done with like like if you were to actually be shooting with eight millimeter, how would it look? Mm. Like then it could look really nice. Um, but I I gravitate to like that like dirty, grungy, grainy look because like, that's that's my roots. Like from like VHS to shooting on whatever you can. Like even on the Canon Mark II, like I think like you can go only go up to like four hundred ISO before you hit eight hundred <laughs> and everything's grainy. Yeah. You know. But there's a look to it. Uh, but there's a look to yeah. it. Like, like it's nice. Like, and, and I think that for me, like I've never been like a super clinical person unless I have to. Mm-hmm. With commercial work, obviously, there's right. You know, you have to be clinical sometimes. But when it comes to like your personal, like you, like do what makes you. And and for me, like it's just that like grimy, like dude. A twenty four does a beautiful. It's a great example of just yeah. like like the tones that they use, the color that they. You know, there's just there's a flavor to it, you know? And I love that flavor, dude. Like, it's just, it, it, it just, yeah, I, it just resonates with me for some reason. Yeah. I love it. I, and I think, you know, you're obviously, I think you work on red most of the time. Is that kind of your go-to? I kind of work with a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So I, I do, I, I have a, a red, um, sometimes it's a little clinically too sharp. Um, so I'll, I'll jump on like, uh, right now, like my personal is, a, is like a 6K Pro. Okay. Um, Cause that, I think, I think the color science, there is, we, I had somebody that knew that bought the 4k when it first came out. I'm like, I can't explain it, but there's like a weird, (laughs) the, the blacks aren't black, but like they are black and like, there's a green tint. I'm like, yeah, I like it. I like it. I like, cause it, cause it resembles like old film, Yeah, you know, it resembles like the films that we grew up, like today's movies are so clinically clean. Like, it's just like, yeah, you know? I love the guys that are doing like the euphorias, you know, and I feel like the can like the 6K or the 4K, even just the black magic line, I have an Ursa too. Mm-hmm. Um, like those cameras, for some reason, out of the box just give you that, you know, like that like creaminess, yeah. you know. Um, red is very clinically sharp. Like you're gonna shoot like a commercial or like a Marvel movie with like yeah. that camera. So I actually do not use that camera very often. Um you know, which is crazy because I've always well, wanted one. But again, like the, the right tool for the right job. Yeah. I mean, if you know what you're looking for yeah. at the end of the day and it's not, you don't have to be clinical for somebody or something, right. then like do what you think is the right tool for the right. job. Right. Yeah. I agree 100%, man. Yeah. And I, I don't think I'm ever going to, for now, 
like these cameras really kind of just make my work more my work mm -hmm. and I'm gonna stick with them, you know? Well, and that gets into kind of one other point that I had of like just personal content. Mm -hmm. I recently just bought a 2010 Digicam CCD sensor. Okay. Cause I'm like, I was just, I personally don't want to like go full on into film, Yeah, but I'm like, what's close. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay. And then, you know, it's, pocketable camera <laughs> size, you know, phone size. And I'm like, yeah. okay, but now I'm discovering that I'm finding, I, unfortunately, like when I'm out in the world, I'm tunnel vision, not intentionally, but just like, yeah. I'm, I'm leaving the house to go to a destination to do a thing. And that's right. kind of where I leave it. Now I'm like, okay, but like, what's, what are the moments? I mean, it's our job to be creative and to find moments in the world and here i am doing everything but that by complete right. accident just because that's how i operate as a human and i'm like okay how can i bring some conflict into that situation so i just picked up a digital camera i'm like oh my gosh like it's, it's a new world and i'm <laughs> like it sucks but i love it like that's why <laughs> i love it yeah. and it's yeah, like yeah. so so you know what are some things you're looking forward to in, in your own personal work that you know people can kind of take advice on for for me, I think I think the new journey that I'm going to be on uh, is I'm going to continue to do the work that I do professionally, like for for companies and and corporate. I think that's I'm just good at it, so I'm going to mm -hmm. continue to do that for like call it day job, yeah. you know. Um, but uh, for me, on the creative, like I think I I, I want to do commercials that have like a draw to it. So for example, like, um, um, God, I can't think of the example. Sorry. Um, Sorry. It, it's, I, I want to make, I want to make content that, that has like a meaning behind it, mm -hmm. you know, like, like for example, like I, I, I have a spec ad that I, it's in my, in my brain, um, to do something for Lego. Okay? okay. But I want, I want it to feel like, like, not the product is what we're selling, but the, but like the, the lifestyle of, yeah. of just like being a kid and building Legos, you know, and then filming that, like, it's kind of like almost like a home movie type of like, you know, like, yeah, absolutely. and, and, um, that's where I'm, I'm more leaning towards, I think, you know, it's just more of that advertisement that has like that, like, I don't know, that hook of just like, we're not selling the product, but we're selling like this. The You're selling the experience. I mean, yeah. you know, I think that carries through all of your work. And I think yeah. I try to do that in, in my own work of like, okay, like, again, you can be super sterile with the fact that you yeah. have a Lego block and it boom, 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 and boom, yeah. you have a castle. But like the the person behind the thing that's being used is yeah. so critical oh, yeah. to the end result. Yeah. Because you can, and it, that's why I always love looking at like, 80s ads, 90s ads, because oh, yeah. like it's a different world. But like, you know, th that was then it was just, all right, here's the product, new features, sweet, yep. Yep. buy it now, <laughs> 80s payments, you know, but now it's like, all right, we're past those days. Yeah. So now it's, let's tell you why it matters. Exactly. Yeah. And I, I love, I love that type of marketing where it's like, I feel like I'm not being sold. Nobody likes to be sold. Mm -hmm. That's just, we're in a generation that we're, we're being sold all day long. You know, um, and, and I think what's more attractive to me is like the 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 outcome of mm -hmm. like buying a Lego set when you're a kid, building these things and then working at Rockwell. A lot of these 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 uh, engineers, they started building these little like, oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, robot Lego stuff like like actually we work with uh, First Robotics and they have a Lego okay. league, you know, mm -hmm. and it's just kids just being kids. But like that turns into like them being some kind of engineer and doing something, you know, and, 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 but like at the core, it's like, you're still a kid and the product helps you allow, allows you to be a kid, but it actually, it actually, uh, then leads you into something that you enjoy. Like for us as cameras, you know, a hundred percent, but like, how does the camera like impact your life? And that's the story I want to tell. I like you know? that. So where can people find you, your work? Tell us about your your handles, all yeah. that. Fun uh, stuff. So I'm on Instagram uh, at Fausto Anthony. Fausto is my middle name. It's my father's name. Um, Anthony is my first name, but I go by Tony. Um, so you can find find me at Fausto Anthony at Instagram. That's where I'm most active. Um, I have a Vimeo uh, at Tony Nunez Vimeo, um, and then my website. You can find me at my website, which I 
try to keep up to date mostly, um, but at TonyNunez.work, uh, you can find some of my latest and greatest. A lot of my personal projects are on that website. Awesome. Well, yeah. we appreciate you having on. Thanks. Having on the show. Thanks for having us. And if you're out me. there, yeah, absolutely. If you're out there and you're watching or listening or however you're doing it, hit the button. That's good. We would really appreciate that. Leave some comments. Uh, definitely go check out the Makers Wanted piece. Any other work that Tony's been been a part of. Um, great learning pieces to really inspire you to maybe do something great for yourself. But otherwise, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.